Now we're going to move into something a little bit different. We've been looking at using disks and washers to calculate the volume of something that's revolved around some horizontal or vertical line. But now we're going to learn a new method using shells instead. And we'll see what that looks like as we go through this example here. So we're told to take the region bounded by y equals 2x squared minus x cubed and y equals 0, which I've drawn for you here because that's not one that you would probably be able to draw from memory, uh, but if you draw that function it looks like this curve here, and then y equals 0 of course is the x-axis, and we're revolving this around the y-axis. Now if we revolve this around the x-axis, we would most likely use disks to do this. There would be no issues at all because as we slice across the x-axis, we would end up with disks with a thickness of delta x, the radius would just be the difference between y equals 0 and this function here. And then we could integrate after squaring it and expanding and so on. So it would be pretty simple if we were revolving around the x-axis. The difficulty is based on the fact that we're revolving around the y-axis. Now if you think about this, you can imagine what this picture ends up looking like. It kind of ends up looking like a donut with a curved inner edge that comes down to meet at a point in the center. And so if you're slicing across the y-axis like we've done before, you would say these cross sections have some empty space in the middle, so that's going to look like a washer. But if you stop for a second and think about the problem with this, the problem is that the inner and outer edges are both defined by the same function. So we would need to rewrite this as x equals a function of y, and you would need to split up this function into two functions, x equals one function of y and another, that describe that curve on this right side and left side of this peak, which is a pretty thorny algebra problem. There's not a good way to do it. So there's our issue, and that's why washers won't work in this case. We run into that main problem. So we need a new approach. And the new approach is to use shells. So we're going to build this object out of a series of nested shells, each of which looks something like what I've drawn here. So I've drawn this shell here, which is like a can or a, a cup with straight sides. And as we nest these inside of each other, we can build up a full picture. So it's hard to draw that by hand. The textbook has a really nice picture of shells uh, nested around each other, but basically you draw one shell and then on the outside of that you have another shell that has a different height, and then on the inside you have a shell with a different height, and so you can form the overall shape of this object by building shells one inside the other. So if we can do that, if you can visualize that picture, and again I would recommend you go look at the textbook and find that picture that describes these shells and how they're drawn. It really helps to see it. If we can do that, we want to approach the problem similarly to how we did with disks and washers, where we want to be able to find the volume of one of these and then integrate to find the volume of all of them. So let's focus on this for a minute and think about how to find the volume of this shell. Now first of all, we need some dimensions of the shell. The height of the shell will depend on this curve here. So if I have shells nested inside each other, I can have one shell here, and then outside of that there would be another one that's a little bit taller, and inside it there would be one that's a little bit shorter, and so on. So the height of the shell depends on where I slice it which one I'm looking at, and then it depends on the, the curve that describes that upper edge. So for any shell that I, sl that I slice, I can pick out the x value where it is located. For that x value, the height is going to equal 2x squared minus x cubed. That's just the function that describes that top edge. The other significant dimension here would be the radius of this shell. And this may not be as obvious, 
but remember that the radius is just the distance between the center of rotation and whatever edge we're looking at. The center of rotation is right here at x equals zero. The outer edge is changing, but we're calling it x. Whatever value we place this shell at, that outer edge is at the value of x. So the radius just equals x. Now I'll pause here to point out that for all of these shell problems, if the radius is x, that means that the shell is oriented the way that we've drawn it, and the center of rotation is the y-axis. But we can change things up. We could, and you'll see examples of this later on, we could have shells that are drawn on their side. Just like we did disks and washers oriented in both directions. We can do the same with shells. And in that case, the radius would be a y value. So the radius could be x or it could be y. And it's usually just that simple. The only other complication can be if we rotate around a line other than one of the coordinate axes. But in that case, just go back to what we did with disks and washers. And again, think about the distance between the outer edge and the line of rotation. The outer edge is always going to be either x or y, depending on which direction we're working in. And the center of rotation will be whatever line you're given. So we'll do examples of this later on, but I wanted to mention that just so you can kind of visualize all the complications that are coming. Eventually we might do ones that are turned on their side so that the radius would be y minus, say it rotates around the line, uh, y equals negative two, it would be y minus negative two or y plus two. But we'll save that for a little bit later. Okay, so we have our dimensions of one of these shells in general, but now we need to figure out how to find the volume of a shell like this. And this problem looks pretty tricky because you have a really an infinitesimal thickness to the shell. So how can you calculate a volume for it? You really would need to calculate the volume of the outer shell minus the inner one and things get really messy. But there's a much simpler way to approach it. Imagine for a second that this shell is made of foam or something. And imagine that we cut it right down one of these edges. Once we cut it, we unroll it and that would end up looking like this. Basically a big sheet of foam. So once this thing's been unrolled, it just looks like a rectangular object. And rectangular objects are really easy to work with in terms of volume, which is why we do this. So it's a helpful approach because it makes volume really easy to calculate. So the height of this is still 2x squared minus x cubed. That hasn't changed. The thickness of it is delta x, just like it was before. And the only other thing we need to figure out is this length here. But if you compare the two pictures, you should be able to see that this length is related to the original shell. Specifically, the length of that side is the circumference of this original shell, right? It's the distance around so that when you flatten it out, that's the full length of that sheet. So you just need to know that the circumference is related to the radius by two pi. So that length there will be two pi times the radius which is the same as, in our case, 2 pi x. So the volume of this shell would be the product of those three things. The radius times 2 pi times the height times delta x. So in general, the volume using a shell is 2 pi times whatever the radius is times whatever the height is, and then integrating that, because we're adding up many, many shells to make the full volume. So that's the general formula. 
just based on unrolling the shell. The height is usually going to be the function we're given, unless there's maybe two functions that we're looking between, and then it would be the difference of them. The radius will be either x or y, and possibly x minus some constant number or y minus some constant if uh, we throw in a few extra complications. But that's as complicated as it gets. And then we have limits of integration from the inner edge of this thing, which would be here at x equals 0, out to the outer edge here at x equals 2. So let's work out the example up above. So in our example we have limits at 0 and 2, that's the x values at the inside and outside. And then we have 2 pi times x times 2x squared minus x cubed dx. Again, the hard part is setting these up. So once we get to this point, actually integrating is pretty straightforward. We can pull out the 2 pi, perhaps, distribute the x, and then we can integrate and get 1 half x to the fourth minus 1 fifth x to the fifth. And if you work this out, you should get 16 pi over 5. Again, skipping a step or two of the arithmetic, but you can fill those pieces in yourself. So shell problems are different because it's harder to visualize the geometry in a lot of cases. And also, it's different enough that some of the things we learned with disks and washers are a little bit different and you have to pay attention to not confuse the two. But there are some similarities that we can take advantage of, like the fact that the radius is the distance between the center line and the edge. Um, I, I'll mention again that the limits of integration for this one are 0 to 2, and that's important to recognize with shells, it's always going to be the lower limit of integration will be the inside, the value at the inside here, and the outer limit of integration will be at the outside. That'll be the upper limit. All right, so watch out for that. We'll do another example with shells, and I'll give you one with several complications where we turn it sideways, and we have it revolved around a different line other than one of the axes. And if you can do that one, and you can do this one, then shells will be no problem for you.